Sure, we can lug water from one side of the camp to the other, go on four-day hunting trips, and start up a conversation with everyone in sight in Red Dead Redemption 2, but the question remains, is that boring in a video game? Is Rockstar's faithful adaption of reality during the American frontier too real, more simulation than video game, and thus more interesting on paper than it is in a game? It's up to you. Kill them, leave them here, take them with you on the train. Just make sure they don't send no folk after us. Okay. See you back at camp. It seems weird to be asking this question in light of Rockstar's past of delivering really fun open world games. But nevertheless, there's a large contingent of people and a smaller circle of critics who just find the game too dull, too slow, and too methodical. Just look at some of these Metacritic user reviews. Some of the complaints surrounding Red Dead 2's more simulation-based world are that it's much slower than any prior Grand Theft Auto game, and this gameplay speed feels slightly unnatural in an open-world environment. Also, it's a heavily story-based game, meaning there is a ton of exposition to be had in its early hours, along with an introduction and series of tutorials that seemingly go on forever. So some folks are miffed that they just can't pick up the controller and create chaos from the get-go. I said I'd handle this! Didn't seem to be going too well. Also slowing the game down are some updates to the traditional Rockstar control scheme, making it less player-friendly and more practice, practice, practice. Yes, there's a learning curve in the new Red Dead, and furthermore, it's more challenging as well. We understand all these complaints, and yes, we've had them too. The first few hours of the game can be tedious, but in deciding whether the entire game is boring just on its first few hours, we have to say otherwise. Is the game perfect? No, of course not. As mentioned, the complaints being made are valid, but after having completed the game and jumping back in for more, we're also convinced that it's truly one of a kind, and an increased focus on realism does not mean a game has to be boring. Let's break it down. Keeps you sane, it does. Yeah, oh. seems to have done a treat on you. First off, the pacing of this game is very deliberate and not some type of bug or mistake. No, it's not GTA 6 like some wanted, and it's unlike anything Rockstar has done before. But that's one thing we're loving about this game right now. It totally bucks open world conventions. The game plays its best when we're not rushing about, trying to complete missions back to back, or trying to race to its conclusion. Help me! Damn. What happened Please. to you? I need medicine. Oh. Instead, interacting with gang members, helping out a camp, and hunting or socializing not only act as buffers between missions, but they help to fill in the story of who Arthur Morgan really is and why he's with this group of ruffians in the first place. To play this game in a traditional manner of constant forward progression could be boring, as you'd just be constantly riding from one mission to the next while getting pummeled with backstory and similar style shootouts. He's still alive, so don't worry too much about it. True. The game's sixth chapter does introduce a new mechanic and tougher camp conditions that work against this recommendation, but it's also at this point where the initial slow pace starts to have a strong payoff in the narrative. Red Dead Redemption 2 has its own rhythm, and once you buy into it, it becomes very rewarding. Also, for those still not convinced, there are many ways to make aiming, moving, and the camera much more responsive through the settings menu. Don't be afraid to tinker with the controls. As mentioned earlier, realism doesn't have to be boring. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The time in which this game takes place made for brutal living conditions, and thus some of the slog in terms of eating, resting, and chores just makes sense in context. Instead of taking us out of the game, we're finding ourselves more immersed in the open world because of them. Honestly, we found ourselves acting more responsible and moral to those around us, as well as our environments, because not doing so makes the game that much harder. It puts us at odds with the open world, which can be brutally hard to survive. You should be ashamed of yourself, a grown man covered in shit like this. Arthur isn't an overpowered god or a superhero, even if he does murder half the state by the end of the game. He's a dude with a pistol, so going about playing this game like it's GTA 5 makes very little sense. In Red Dead 2, it's all about the little details, and these details can make the game more fun and enjoyable too. Falling off a horse has never been so dangerous, hunting is a risk, the gunplay has never felt so brutal and violent, it's literally changing the way we play open world games. And with all the nearly identical sandbox titles out on the market, isn't that a good thing? <laughs> 
also, this vast open world feels more alive and jam-packed than others in recent memory. So, if you're not a fan of the game's slow pacing, there's no shortage of other things to do in the meantime. Hunt, fish, gamble, rob and loot, treasure hunt, find easter eggs, and so on. These actions almost always relate back to the story somehow and are not mere throwaway tasks, so they may actually get you looking forward to the next mission. Hell, even interacting with a random person in some random town can open up new details about a mission or quest and thus make chance NPC encounters memorable, meaningful, and nearly essential to the game's storyline. And if you're talking to the folks in your gang, it's almost impossible not to come away with something more than you did before speaking to them. Some little tidbit, some little item of information that strengthens the overall narrative. What? what is wrong with me? What is wrong with you? It's hard not to get wrapped up in it all, especially seeing as the game contains some of the best character development we've seen in a video game, period. The story and characters feel right at home with other epic tales about the death of the Wild Wild West, like The Wild Bunch and Once Upon a Time in the West. And characters like Dutch and Arthur feel like modern versions of Pike Bishop and Deke Thornton, or Frank and Harmonica, or other great Western twosomes. Hell, Dutch's appearance even looks like a splitting image of Bill the Butcher from Gangs of New York. Give him to the law. So he gets a good education. All these films are long and not afraid to take their time, and neither is Red Dead Redemption 2. The fact that this game serves as a prequel to Red Dead Redemption really justifies the slow pacing because, ultimately, we already know what happened in the end. So, why rush getting there? What we don't know is why things turned out the way they did. So the minute-to-minute -minute details of Red Dead 2 take on increased importance in terms of the series' overall narrative. You're a real gentleman, you know? Sometimes, maybe. When it comes down to it, we'd recommend savoring the game's pace because it's trying to do something new. It's more in line with Breath of the Wild in terms of how it seeks to revolutionize open-world gameplay, and that should be celebrated, even if it's not your thing. Sure, it isn't everyone's cup of tea, and that's okay. For us, the game's mission design could have eased up on the hand-holding much sooner. But, whether we like it or not, Red Dead Redemption 2 is a giant leap forward for open-world games, and the future looks bright. Check out these other great clips from Mojo, please. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.